Welcome to this episode of Testable Faith. My name is Fuzz Rana, and I'm joined in studio by Dr. Kristen Davis, who is part of the scholar community and is here at Reasons to Believe as part of our Visiting Scholar program. And today we're going to be talking about the question, will AI ever be human? Uh, Kristen, thank you for being here. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And I'm looking forward to our conversation about the prospects of, you know, AI being like us. And, you know, maybe one of the, the, the concerns, if we think about AI being human, is what are the implications of that? So unpack that for me. What are, what are some of the implications, maybe, first of all, theologically? Yeah, so one of the questions that people have kind of raised in relation to religion um, with AI being the equivalent of humanity is whether or not it would then undermine the idea that we need God for our existence. Mm. And so the idea is that if we can create um, everything that a human can do mechanistically without the need for, um, if, if we can do it as humans, then we don't need God to be able to create that unique special thing that's about humanity. Um, I think that then has implications for potentially our view about the image of God. If we can create something that is the equivalent of humanity, that then would have implications for how we are actually made in the image of God. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, a, a profound issue, right? You know, because yeah. I think already today in our world, people are increasingly asking the question, well, who are we as mm -hmm. human beings? And oftentimes have adopted a materialistic perspective and really have written off the Christian view of, of humanity. And so this is really a pressing issue then. Yeah, it definitely is because humanity is more than just our rational capacities. And that's what it, we're being re reduced to, just the ability to problem solve within the world. But that's not all of what makes us like God. Mm -hmm. There's creativity, there's innovation, there's compassion, there's the ability to have emotions and experience reality. All of those things are uh, parts of our being persons or personhood and reflect part of what it means to be in the image of God. Yeah. Okay. So is it ever going to be possible to make an AI system that is equivalent to a human being? I'm always hesitant to answer that question. Um, I, because I think that the way that you can disprove it is just by creating something that can do all the things that a human can do. So I will never talk about it, or I'll, I'll never respond no if you're asking it from a technology perspective. But if you're asking from a philosophical perspective, I think we have good reasons to believe that an AI would never be equivalent to a human. Some of the reasons have to do with whether or not it would be alive, what's the difference between um, environment navigation and, and really having a will that can give us um, differentiation and decision making over and above just kind of cause and effect. Um, and then our ability to reflect on reality versus just being able to apply categories to the world around us. So I think we'll never be able to create something that is all that a human is um, in terms of life and, in, and all of those kinds of things. But that's not to say that we might not be able to create something that was very convincing at being able to do the jobs that humans can do. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's a really important point, because a lot of times I hear uh, Christian apologists may be a bit triumphalistically saying that well, AI is never going to be truly like us. And so your point is that from a technological standpoint, we may want to be cautious about making that, yeah. that assertion, but philosophically, we're on good grounds as, a, as apologists when we make that that. Uh, assertion. Yeah, I think the difference is we. it's really difficult to predict what someone's going to be capable of building. We've seen massive amounts yeah. of innovation in our lifetime alone. The last couple hundred of years, it's been incredible. So to be able to say this type of thing is never going to be able to be achieved is, I feel like, putting yourself in a, on the back foot. However, if they accomplish their goal, if AI proponents build the thing that they would like to build, what would that thing then be? That yeah. is a purely philosophical conversation, and we can speak very um, definitively about that. Yeah. Okay, so then one uh, aspect of what it means to be human is that we have an inherent sense of right and wrong, mm -hmm. right? That we have a, a sense of justice, that we are moral creatures, uh, could AI ever be moral? It, can we truly attribute uh, morality to AI systems? Can we ever hold them culpable for what they do? 
That's a good question. It depends on whether or not we can actually create a being that is sentient. I would argue that no, it, if we, whatever we could build would only ever actually be a tool for us to use. But if you come to the conclusion that what you're building is sentient, then you have to allow that thing to be morally responsible for its own actions. Um, and I think that that's really important because the way we train AI is off a of data set. And so when we train it, it picks up the characteristics of the data set that we give it. And so it's interesting. They've trained some AIs, let them loose on what Twitter, what is now X, and they've ended up being really racist mm -hmm. uh, because the category of data that they ended up training it against had that propensity. There have been studies where they've trained um, algorithms for um, attempting to like bring students in um, acceptance for students into Ivy, Ivy League schools. And what they ended up seeing with that is the training of the algorithm resulted in the exact same people getting accepted in the school as the people who were actually doing the acceptances when they were done manually. Why? Because it was trained off the same data set as the people who were doing the manual admissions. And so you end up getting the morality of the data set that the, the AI was trained against. Yeah. So the, the bottom line is that because uh, of the nature of AI systems, you could never truly hold them culpable. The, the, the group that would be culpable would be the, the inventors of yes. AI. Yeah. Now, this is interesting because you may inadvertently introduce a morality then into the AI system through the training set that you didn't intend. Yeah. And I think that's why this is really important that Christians are involved because sometimes people say that just because we can build something doesn't mean that we should. And the idea behind that is as Christians, we just want to you know, step back, take our hands off of this and not get involved. But if we do that, then we are tacitly allowing AIs to be trained with moral systems other than Christian. And it's really, um, it's really potentially detrimental because there's a lot of subtle port, subtle parts to data sets that aren't necessarily mm. immediately obvious. And so unless we have some sort of Christian filter or influence in it, we could end up with things that we really <laughs> do not want. Yeah. yeah, well, it's interesting to think about this question again. You know, uh, will AI ever be human? And uh, bottom line is philosophically probably no. And uh, but we need to think through again the implications. And this is a place where the Christian worldview is important and where people uh, as Christians need to be engaged. So I appreciate that that bit of advice. Uh, thank you so much for watching this episode of Testable Faith. If you want to know more about Kristen Davis and the type of work that she's done for us at Reasons to Believe, go to our website and search Kristen Davis's name and then also check out the links that are in the description of this video. Until next time, remember, the more that we know about science, the more that we have reasons to believe.